So despite now being only six weeks away from the release of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, there's still a lot we don't really know about the game. In fact, we've only really seen a bit of East Anglia and cats, really. Just just lots of cats. And I thought today I'd put together five questions we still have about the game, as well as some theories to those questions. So without further ado, let's get into the list. So last month when I made a video about predictions for Valhalla, one of the things I mentioned was Stonehenge and why I thought it was an Isu site. I spoke a bit about the Isu maps and why to some extent they are still important, and the other day somebody said this to Darby on Twitter. A friend of mine showed me the Codex map from AC2 and it shows an assassin logo on upstate New York, AC3 and Norway, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. How long have Ubisoft been planning this? It seems Valhalla may be a game full of answers to old questions. Now of course Valhalla wasn't planned back in 2009, but it's interesting nonetheless, and Darby replied saying, buckle up, you're in for something special. So I'm left wondering what this Isu site actually entails and how it's involved with the narrative. We know that Avil and their group spends the start of the game in Norway before leaving for England, and I'm wondering whether this site has something to do with why they leave, because it clearly has something to do with the narrative on account of what Darby's saying. My sort of theory on why we'd leave Norway was our home would be destroyed and we'd go to England to find a new home, a new opportunity, and I think that could still happen if our home was on top of an Isu site or it's in its way and it was destroyed by Templars maybe. Later we find that out and join the assassins because our goals sort of aligned but that's just sort of an idea. But I'd love to know exactly what this Isu site is and how it relates to the narrative because it's clearly important judging from what Darby's saying. So something that I feel basically the entire community has been dying to know is how both male and female Eivor are canon. In recent years the Animus hasn't really had any rules like it used to do and will do basically whatever Ubisoft want it to do to cram a marketable gameplay feature into the game. And my worry is that we'll get another cheap excuse as to why both female and male Eivors are canon. Originally I thought that we'd get another Animus related excuse but as we're getting a comic that as far as we know just follows female Eivor outside of the Animus in the same way the novels did, you can't really use Animus trickery to sort of keep things vague. Amar did leave some weird comments as if to suggest female Eivor is the canon character to sell more units in classic Amar fashion, but that's clearly not the case and goes against Darby's vision as the narrative director. So the point is we know both are canon and we aren't going to have another case of the Animus not being able to read DNA or suffering a glitch, so I have no idea how these two are basically the same person nor how that's explained, but if there's anyone that I trust with AC canon, it's Darby, so I'm interested in seeing how exactly he manages to pull this off. Now, one of the things I'm most hoped for in Valhalla hasn't even been announced yet, but we know it will happen, and that's DLC. In both other RPG games, we've had two expansions onto the main game that had a new story and section of the map, and we could already be sure Valhalla was going to get the same treatment. That's been pretty much made a done deal by the confirmation of a season pass, but my question is what exactly does the DLC entail? I spoke in my predictions video about some places we could see the DLC set, but I'm still left wondering when this will be revealed, when the DLC is set and how exactly it's structured. For one, Valhalla is meant to have no level barriers like Origins and Odyssey did, and if you take a DLC like the Hin ones and remove level barriers, that is a really short DLC, maybe two hours. And with that out the way, it's naturally going to be harder justifying the price if you can't sort of inflate its worth. I also really hope it's not in an episodic style like Odyssey's DLC, so you'll start the DLC and finish it months after you started it, basically killing any narrative momentum and making it fairly easy to lose interest. Me and and a lot of people have spoke about maybe bundling in an AC1 remaster with the season pass, like how 3 was bundled with Odysseys, but at this point I don't really see that happening. AC1 is an old game, and even Ubisoft I don't think could be as lazy as they were with their other remasters. The biggest gap between a game's initial release and then its remaster is 7 years. With AC1, you'd have to double that gap. And even with Ubisoft being Ubisoft, I have the feeling they'd have to actually remake it, even if it was a sort of light remake, which would be too much value to just throw in a season pass. As for the DLC's reveal, I have a feeling we'll see another Ubisoft forward just before the game comes out. We had one in July, one in September that completely avoided Valhalla, so a Valhalla-centred one would make sense in maybe November or late October. Origins had a post-launch content trailer release maybe two weeks before the game came out, and Odyssey did that too, and I could see a similar thing happening at UB Forward. Either way, Ubisoft always teases DLC before the game releases to capitalise on that hype, so I'd expect to hear about that soon. 
So one of the things I'm most interested in with Valhalla is what happened to Layla, what happened to Otto Berg, and what generally is going to happen in the modern day. It seems like after eight years of disappointment and important plot points happening in transmedia, the modern day is finally going to take centre stage again and with a great writer at the helm. We know a little about the modern day already. People who have played demos have seen Layla saying she looks much older and worn down, and also that Rebecca is back, but unfortunately with a different voice actor. I really want to know what Darby's plans are for Layla and Otto Berg. Otto Berg basically took over as the main modern day antagonist after Juno and is now paralysed with Layla. Layla herself was seemingly corrupted by the staff of Hermes the last we saw her, however Darby has promised we'll like it in Valhalla. I'm really interested in what's going to happen to her because I'm fairly sure this will be our last game as her and I don't really know if Darby can turn two games of poor character writing into something genuinely compelling but he is the guy to do it so we'll have to wait and see. So what I want to see most in Valhalla is how the assassins are involved, how they're involved with Eivor and what this bridge between the Hidden Ones and Levantine assassins actually looks like. From the very start it seemed like Eivor is going to be sort of like Edward in how they begin as much more of a rogue and later become an assassin, being familiarised with their values and considering Viking culture and their values on things like freedom and family, that does make sense. I'm interested in how exactly Eivor is going to link to the other assassins in the series. Maybe they'll learn of Bayek and Aya, and there's even a popular theory going around that Eivor is an ancestor of Edward, which I could see happening to be fair. Darby wrote Edward and clearly has a connection to that character, and him being half English, it doesn't not make sense. I do sort of like the idea of being crucial to the development of the assassins, but then Eivor also starting a legacy of assassins. You could even go with the Freus, I wouldn't really mind that too much, as it makes Syndicate feel like less of like a pointless side note. If Eivor started this family of assassins that would live on for over a millennium, but I think it would be more likely with Edward given those comparisons. There really is so much that can be done with the assassins and Eivor in 9th century England and I can't wait to see what's done. Anyway, that's it for today guys. I know I've been gone for like, I don't know, six weeks now? But I should be back now with fairly regular uploads and tomorrow, or today I guess, I'm going to be streaming the road to Valhalla again and we're going to be into Revelation. So that should be sick. Jump in if you like. And also, um the black flag finale battle thing on joe's channel is out either now or in like half an hour depending when this goes up but I'll, I'll link that in the description anyway thank you guys for watching it's really good to be back and i will see you all next time